Do you remember the early 90s? It was the time when the world was reordered after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of the Cold War. And people started to look forward to a new millennium. But it was also the time something new emerged, the internet. At the beginning, nobody really knew what to do about it. And there was only a few technology enthusiasts and computer geeks that could use it and could make sense of things like TCP, IP, SMTP, URLs, etc. But nobody had a clue how much of a groundbreaking technology this internet was and how much it was going to influence our, our lives over the next 20 years, since nobody heard of things like Google, Facebook, Twitter and Skype. Now, fast forward to fall 2008, and we are in the midst of the biggest financial crisis of a century. The years between the birth of the internet in the early 90s and the financial crisis of 2008 were also the years where global banks saw unprecedented and, in hindsight, unhealthy growth. I'm sure you remember the biggest bankruptcy case of, the, of those days, Lehman Brothers in fall 2008. Governments had then to come to rescue a lot of banks and bail them out. And this shattering meltdown of the financial system caused many people to lose trust into the, into the then established centralized world, world order. They also started to question governments since they didn't understand why banks had to be bailed out by taxpayers' money in the first place. I remember vividly coming to work every day during these dark days, having witnessed endless cycles of redundancies around me, and it was upsetting to see how whole teams, including my own, were dismantled. Now, I'm sure you're wondering how my topic today, the blockchain, fits in with all of this. Well, today we are at the time again, like in the early 90s, when a new technology, this time the blockchain, emerged. And to link my trip down memory lane about the financial crisis to this topic, this technology was born just two months after the collapse of Lehman Brothers. In that fall, somebody called Satoshi Namamoto released a white paper onto the internet entitled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And the first sentence in that white paper reads, a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. Was this, was this just a coincidence or very, well, or very well timed that somebody released such an idea at a time when trust into the centralized system was lost? We will probably never know, as the author of the white paper and therefore the father of the blockchain remains anonymous to the day. But be it as it is, the blockchain was born with the release of that groundbreaking paper and is described by many as the biggest technological invention since the internet. I'm sure you're wondering how the blockchain now really works. Well, there's a couple of people that describe it as follows. Blockchain technology facilitates peer-to-peer -peer transactions without any intermediary, such as a bank or a governing body. Don Tapscott, who I cited here, is one of the world's leading innovators um, and uh, a thought leader on the topic of blockchain. So at its core, the blockchain makes it possible to remove all middlemen when transacting with digital assets, as they will simply not be needed anymore. But wait a minute, the, the white paper had the to topic Bitcoin, not blockchain. Why is that? Well, I would like to use a simple example. Imagine that the Bitcoin is a simple application that leverages the blockchain technology to send money around. The same way like an email application leverages the internet to send an email around. And so here we come and, this, and this start demystifying this blockchain. At its core, the blockchain is nothing else but a database. A database that is public, therefore not owned by anybody, distributed, therefore not stored centrally on a computer, but on many computers across the world, constantly synchronized to keep the transactions up to date, and secured overall by the art of cryptography to make it tamper-proof and hacker-proof. These four features make this technology exceptional. And I believe this can, be, this can lead to great things. In fact, I just made one of the biggest decisions in my life last month, and I gave up a 20-year career in financial services to fully focus on this topic. This newly found passion of mine started exactly a year ago while visiting Silicon Valley. There, a lot of people talked about blockchain, and after reading a few books and talking to more people, I was hooked and decided to be part of that blockchain ecosystem here in Switzerland.
Thank God I'm not alone in this discovery journey of the blockchain. There are quite a few other people involved in this topic, and especially a lot of investors have recently joined the party. Overall, there was more than one billion US dollar invested in Bitcoin and blockchain technologies in the last years. More than half of that alone last year. But now, let's make this more real and, and I'll show you a few examples of how this works. First, for Bitcoins, there are many services available already. Some of you might have heard of wallet services. One example of such a wallet service is Xapo. Xapo has a, um, has a wallet that you basically download onto your iPhone or, or on your computer, and then ultimately can sell, buy, spend your Bitcoins at retailers and so forth. And they incidentally opened an office here in Switzerland just last year and, stay, and, say, and store some of their service in a big bunker in the Swiss mountains. Then there are other examples in the financial services industry. For instance, uh, dealing with equities, bonds and derivatives. One such example is Nasdaq, who launched a service, a, a blockchain-based marketplace service together with a startup called Chain, and to trade non-public shares just last October. But let's move away from financial services examples to something that is more interesting, other industries. I show you some examples here that are a little bit early stage, but they're all real nonetheless. First, Open Bazaar. Open Bazaar allows you to open your own marketplace, your own shop on the blockchain, and then ultimately trade peer to peer with your clients, removing the need for e commerce middlemen like eBay and the likes. Another example is Lassus. With Lassus, you basically can they take on Uber and Lyft and the likes, and they connect driver's spare capacity with, with riders directly. Next, for those who like the music, Ucho Music. With Ucho Music, the artists and their work connect directly, ultimately, with the clients, removing the need for the likes of Apple Music, Spotify, and, and make a much fairer deal for the artists themselves. And lastly, one name. With one name, you can open your own blockchain ID, which is then used for you to sign into services like Twitter, Skype, Facebook, and the likes. So gone are the days where you had to have a password for all these sites. You can use the, the, the blockchain ID going forward for all of this. And personally, I think such blockchain services have a bright future, since you can not only store passwords, but any other personal information securely on the blockchain. But in order for this to work, governments would need to start um, formally accepting such blockchain IDs and start issuing their official documents digitally to you rather than physically. So passports, driver's licenses, birth and marriage certificates, and so forth. But then, public notaries could link their land registers that are based on the blockchain, something some countries are already doing, directly to you via the blockchain ID, so very efficiently and safe. Voting could take place on the blockchain as well. So the next presidential or any other election can take place comfortably from the, from the comfort of your living room. Doctors could, doctors could upload their health records to the blockchain and link your personal files directly to your, your ID. So when you travel and have an accident abroad, you would always have your medical details with you. Such services take time to develop, clearly. But it's also not just science fiction. Just last month, the UK government released a big report on blockchain, recommending the UK government to deeply investigate this technology and see how it can be used for governmental services. And Estonia launched e-residency last year, a campaign that looks at government-issued digital identities. As part of that campaign, Estonia has now teamed up with BitNation, a startup in Estonia, to offer public notary services, and since December, Estonian marriages can be directly linked to the blockchain via such services. But now I have to, unfortunately, um, warn you a little bit again. We are not quite there yet where all of this becomes reality for all of us to use. While Bitcoin was there for seven years, and has been testing the blockchain technology extensively, Bitcoin had anything but a quiet right since its inception, which makes a lot of people skeptical, and probably rightly so. And then there are some regulatory questions that still need to be addressed, again, for Bitcoin 
the fact that they, need, they remove the need for banks in the middle, and that includes central banks, make a few governments a bit nervous. So while we have technological and regulatory uh, issues to be resolved, I have no doubt that this will be the case and will be done soon. And that's one of the reasons why I founded my company, to be part of that next evolution of the blockchain technology. So I wonder if the financial crisis was a good thing and, that, and was an opportunity after all for all of us. It might have inspired this brilliant mind to come up with this blockchain technology at a time when trust into the centralized system was lost. And even if it was a coincidence, it was definitely at the right time in history. I wonder if we look back in 20 years the same way we look back today at the early 90s and wonder how the blockchain technology has changed all our lives such a, in such a dramatic fashion. With that, I would like to welcome you back in 2035 for a review of today's predictions. Thank you.